testing. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Hey, so I'm Munaf Kapalya. I'm the self-designated chief eating officer at the Bori Kitchen. Um, I'm also known as the guy who quit Google to sell samosas. Now my story started in December 2014, that's my mother. It started one fine weekend, I was sitting with my mom in the living room and uh, we were watching TV. I was watching TV. And my mom comes in and changes the channel to watch one of those Sars Bahu shows. Uh, it led to a small fight, which led to an idea. It led to an idea that mom and I should combine forces to do something to keep her productively employed. For as long as I can remember, since I learned the ABC of marketing, uh, I've always wanted to market food from my community. I belong to a small community called Dawdi Bora Muslims, Dawdi Bodis. We have fantastic food, veg and non veg. Uh, we eat out of the, this huge plate called the Bori Thal. We sit on the ground and we eat directly from it. And my mom happens to be the best Bori chef in the world. So instead of opening a restaurant, which one might think is the ideal thing to do, I felt that a restaurant would commoditize our food, it would commoditize the experience. So I did the next best thing. I started inviting people home. So every Saturday and Sunday since December 2014, we would call complete strangers to my house to eat food made by mom. We would charge them a nominal amount to eat that food. And over a 90 minute uh, sort of SOP, as I like to call it, uh, we would take them through the art of eating food from a bori thal. And roughly three years later, I find myself on the cover of Forbes magazine. Wow. On that cover, you have the co-founders of Swiggy. You have Masaba. You have an Olympic athlete, you have a Bollywood actor, and you have a guy who's selling samosas. <laughs> now, how did this happen? It started with the decision in 2014 to create a very strong brand, the Bori Kitchen. It started with the decision to give this brand a sort of a multiple personality disorder. Okay, on one end, you gave it a personality of mine, a slightly narcissistic, a slightly condescending, overconfident personality, which means that you can't book a seat at the Bori Kitchen, you have to ask for a seat, right? Uh, but at the same time, you gave it my parents' personality. Honest, sincere, genuine. What does that mean? That means when you come to my house, if you make it to my house and you come to my house to eat a meal, they will feed you so much that they will single-handedly ensure I make absolutely no profit margin. <laughs> the same brand came across in our communication strategies. So if you ever visit our social media pages, one day you will see professionally taken photographs which look like they've come out of a MasterChef Australia episode. On another day, you will see amateurly taken videos, a video taken by my mom on a fairly low-end camera of an egg preparation where she was simply putting ghee on the dish. That video got 85,000 views in three days. That is the kind of brand we were trying to build. Eventually, my mom trying all these samosas, that scent of those samosas got out of the house and the press started coming into the house. Journalists started coming to my place. And every one of them would ask me, Munaf, what's your vision with the Bori Kitchen? And the MBA that I am, my vision was to create a samosa empire to one day build a 100 crore f and business uh, promoting Bori food. But somewhere my marketing instinct told me that, Munaf, that's not the right answer. So instead I told them the other answer, which is also true. I told them that my vision is the Bori Kitchen should become so famous that Shah Rukh Khan comes home one day. <laughs> Because all of us in the Kaparia family, for good or for bad, we are all Shah Rukh Khan fanatics. End of 2015, uh, I swear on God, there was thunder and lightning in the sky. There was a drum roll somewhere and I took this incredibly dramatic decision to quit my four-year career at Google to start, uh, to become the full-time chief eating officer at the Bori Kitchen. And whenever I tell people this, they tell me that Munaf, you are this courageous hero. Wow, you, you gave up your dream job to pursue your dreams. Or people tell me, Munaf, you're the dumbest, foolish person we've ever met who lets go of a stable career at Google. But guys, I have a secret to share with all of you. It's neither of these two reasons. I, I gave up my job because it made sense. It was a calculated decision to take at that point in my time, in my life. 
Uh, I come from a privilege. I'm lucky. I belong to an upper middle class family. I stay with my parents. I did not have any financial abilities. I wasn't married. It made sense to take a risk and to pursue an entrepreneurial venture, and that's what I did. I went with it. But the other reason was a conversation I had with my super boss at Google, Vikas Agnihotri. Vikas told me, Munaf, stop looking at life from a one year lens. Look at it from a five year lens. What does that mean? It means that I quit Google and I pursue the Bodhi Kitchen and one year later the Bodhi Kitchen fails. I get a job again, I go back in the corporate rigmarole. Five years later I would have forgotten I even took a gap. Because things just average out, that's how life works. But, let's say I quit Google, I pursue the Bodhi Kitchen. One year later I'm still pursuing the Bodhi Kitchen. Two years later I'm still pursuing it. Five years later I'm on the stage and I'm still pursuing it. It changes your life. It gives you opportunities you would have never imagined possible. It gets you to Amritsar. <laughs> so I go into 2016, I take the bull by its horns. I'm this hero who has quit Google. I'm this guy who's built a brand out of his house and everyone's talking about it. How difficult can it be to scale my operations? Yeah. How difficult can it be to standardize mom's food? How hard can it be? How hard can it be to maintain a book of accounts to ensure that you're profitable? How hard can it be to deliver this food across the city? As it turns out, it's incredibly hard. Within three months of starting our delivery operation, I started getting feedback that the food's not good. It's not anywhere as good as mom's food that she used to make in the home dining experience. Six months into it, I started realizing that, hey, we aren't making any money. Twelve months into it, I sit down with my CA and I'm like, so what are the numbers like? Because I've been avoiding them. I hate numbers. I hate accounts. And my CA tells me, Munaf, have you heard of something called VAT? And I swear on God, I thought he said VAT. <laughs> right? He said, Munaf, your VAT liability, which you clearly don't even know what that is, your VAT liability is equivalent to your savings that you have in your savings account, which technically meant that for the first time in my life, I was completely broke. I was bankrupt. I said that, hey, maybe this is a good time to call it quits. I've given it a good one, one and a half year. Let's, let's get back into the corporate rat race. You know what Vikas said, it's okay, you can, you can go back into it. So I was literally about to click on a couple of places to upload my CV. And I get a call from the lovely people at Forbes. And they're like, Munaf, congratulations, you know, you've, you've done so well. We're putting you on the cover of Forbes magazine. And people normally react to this kind of information by saying, wow, oh my god, thank you so much. I reacted by saying, why? <laughs> right? I was like, oh, guys, I'm about to shut this down. Things are not going well. Why did you put me on the cover? And the lady on the other end told me that, Munaf, we put you in this list. We call, we're calling you a Forbes 30 under 30. Not because of your net worth, not because you're tremendously successful, but because we feel you're on the verge of doing something disruptive. Unfortunately, entrepreneurship is a thing when 99% of people don't make it, they don't succeed, it fails eventually. But whether you succeed or fail, as long as you give it a good shot, you will end up doing something disruptive and motivating a lot of people. And exactly for that reason, we've decided to put you on the list. The embarrassment of coming on the cover of Forbes in March 2017 made me keep the Bodhi Kitchen alive. <laughs> All right. So the idea was that I'd come on the cover and then everyone would call me to congratulate me. I can't possibly tell them that you guys are shut down the business. That's embarrassing. <laughs> so I said, okay, let's just keep it going. You know? And since I decided to keep it going, I said, let's re-attempt it completely. I learned how to make my mother's biryani very much to her dismay. Uh, I did a crash course in accounts and I started monitoring my numbers a lot more carefully. And before we knew it, my food was better. My delivery kitchen's food. It actually started getting consistent reviews because the boys now knew that the boss knows how to make it so they can't fool around. Before you knew it, the numbers started to make sense and the body patient for the first time in 2017 broke even and became profitable. And once we came on the cover of Forbes, even more people started coming to my house, more PR, more journalists. And they would ask me the same question, Munaf, what's your vision for the Bodhi Kitchen? And I was like, hey guys, Shah Rukh Khan still hasn't come, so the vision stays the same. <laughs> but one thing had changed. 
half of Bollywood have already been to my house. So whether it was Rani Mukherjee or Farah Khan or Rithik Roshan or Rishi Kapoor or Ashtar Duhart or Sanjay Leela Bansali or various other Bollywood personalities, politicians, uh, influencers and what not, they had either come to my place to eat food made by my mom or they had requested that we go to their house with the Bodhi Khan. And I finally decided that uh, this was the right time to really scale up the business. And it really helped that my mother's beautiful face was plastered across the globe thanks to BBC. They literally did an eight minute documentary on us and they put it across the world. Uh, and they telecasted it across the world. And I literally feel that at that stage I felt that we've taken Bodhi food and we put it on the world now. So 2018, right, so I have a business model which is finally making sense, it's profitable, I'm feeling a lot more confident about my food, more and more people are talking about us, I decided it's time to raise funds and scale up my business. And I scaled it fast and I scaled it hard. I created a supply chain that instead of just food coming out of one kitchen, we now had a supply chain that could deliver to 30 outlets at one point in time. We created food where just like my home dining experience and my delivery food started getting rave reviews. And everyone's like, hey, obviously your non-veg food is good, you represent the Muslim cuisine, but hey, guess what, even our veg food is award winning. Our veg biryani, Bombay is one of the best biryanis out there. So food was actually, it is actually really good. We started getting rave reviews everywhere, on every single review platform, we are a 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, and it's a very nice, powerful delivery brand. I even created our first physical outlet, I call it a samosa station. It's an 80 square foot QSR that bangs out bedar rotis and mutton kheema samosas and, and whatnot. I created five delivery kitchens on the western side of Bombay. Okay, dark kitchens, cloud kitchens, so anywhere in the western suburbs you could order for our food on Swiggy, Zomato, to the Kitchen.com. And none of this would have been possible if it wasn't for the team. We built a team of 45 employees. I built a leadership layer of 10 plus years of FMB experience. People who put their blood, their sweat, their heart into the organization. A couple of months back, we did our first town hall, and I was shocked to see that, oh my God, I have so many people who I am responsible for, whose salaries I am responsible for. I have to sign the check for all of these people. My parents were obviously the chief guests, you know, at this town hall of ours. We won various awards. My mother won the Rising Star Award from uh, Midday, uh, from her uh, sort of, so much she really respected by uh, And Times Food Awards, which is one of the most prestigious award institutions in FNB, created a category called Bori Restaurant. And they gave us that award in 2018 and in 2019. But if there's one thing that explains the peak at which the brand reached at the end of 2019 is this video.
Frodo or Sam from Lord of the Rings, in case you guys have seen that or anything. You know, they're returning back from the adventure which has changed their lives. They've saved Middle Earth, they've destroyed the ring. And they return to the Shire, and nothing's changed out there. You know, people don't even know what they've achieved. It's almost like they've gone back in time. In the last few months, I've had to shut down four of my orphans. In the last few months, I've had to let go of half my organization. Because somewhere, I realized something after five years of running this, after two years of aggressively scaling up my business, I realized that while sending out 200 boxes of biryani is incredibly satisfying, it's not nearly as impactful as inviting 20 people to my house. And it made me question my business model. And it's put me in a situation today, a, a place of introspection, where I'm asking myself that maybe now it's time, it's, it's, it's the right time to take a break. It's, it's time to get a job again. It's time to again make money for the first time in my last five years. You know, I've sacrificed enough and I'm getting married in March. So maybe it's time to actually be financially responsible. But then this happened. <laughs> the amazing, beautiful, outstandingly nice people at Harper Call installed me a couple of months back and they're like, Muna, congratulations, we want you to write a book called the guy who quit Google to sell samosas and we want to publish it worldwide. And guys, now I'm thinking, shit, this book is going to come out sometime this year. <laughs> and I'm going to be on the cover of it. And I can't possibly be in a situation where the body kitchen isn't alive when that happens. Thank you. Oh.